from his players, Darius Hamilton, who's, this is like part of your yearly itinerary. Yeah, apparently. This apparently. is the third straight year you've been yeah. here. Yeah. All right, well, great to have you back. You're, you're a veteran. Did you explain to the guys what to, what to expect here? Yeah, they got to run down. They got to run down. They're All doing right. a good job today. Appreciate right, we, it. You got <laughs> Julian Pinnix, Audric, and uh, Andre Patton as well. Uh, guys, let's start with your new head coach, Chris Ash. Give us a sense of what it's been like to play for him and what stands out here early on uh, about Chris Ash. Why don't we start with you, Julian? Uh, I think it's, it's, it's the foundation of culture. I think Coach Ash really harps on f uh, making a foundation of leadership. And, you know, as many coaches say that, he really follows through on it. Like, we've had hour-long meetings about leadership. Uh, no film, no X's and O's. And I think that's a foundation that Coach Ash and Coach Parker are really stressing to bring to the team and I think is really working. Give me an example, Andre, of what he talks about in some of that leadership. Uh, what does he want from you guys in terms of, of being leaders? He just, you know, he wants the leaders the best. He wants the leaders to be the best players, you know, and the best players, you know, they got to lead and they got to take their units, you know, because it's 10 strong. If you have a leader in that unit, you know, that, that'll drive that unit and ultimately we'll be 10 units strong. Darius, I know about your leadership. Kyle Flood used to rave to me about you and said you were kind of everything that he wanted a, a Rutgers football player to be. So you're someone who's been a leader on this team for years. How have you embraced that mantle under the new head coach? Well, I mean, I, th I think I think it's come naturally. I think with the guys that we have now, we've got a lot of older guys like you see Julian and Andre now. They're older guys. And um, I think when you have people who are happy to follow leaders, Everything works out for itself. It's not something that you have to force upon people. People believe you. People seeing the work that you've put in. People know, you know, that that you always have the the best intentions when it comes to the team. And you know, people are happy to follow a guy like that. What's changed the most in this program from last year to this year? I would say overall excitement. I, I, I think that, you know, ever since Coach Ash has gotten here up to this point, this team's been excited day in and day out to come in and go to work. And I don't see it dying down anytime soon. They, they, we, we, we come, they come to work, man. We work extremely hard, and um, you know we're all really excited about what the season has coming up for us. What about from your guys' point of view? What's been the biggest change? Uh, to piggyback off what Darius said, it's, it's the culture that's being built. And sometimes you get lost in the sauce as a player when you hear so much leadership and so much, oh, we'll believe in the program and believe in the plan. Um, but I think the consistency that Coach Ash brings his plan with, uh, guys are really starting to buy in. So it's not so much a new regiment, but it's becoming who we are and, and the foundation of our team. I will also piggyback and I will kind of say our mentality has changed, you know, kind of striving to be the best and work hard. And we actually enjoy coming in every day and working hard. We actually enjoy coming in every day and working out, even though our workouts is really crazy and hard. But... <laughs> It's something we enjoy and we embrace and we, and we take it on every day. Andre, this is kind of the elephant in the room, I think, with Rutgers football, this notion of how south things went last year, not just on the field but off the field with a lot of behavioral issues. What's been the message now from internally, guys on the team? What have you been saying about comportment and about how you carry yourself? You know, just carry yourself the right way, do your job, and make sure you stay out of trouble. You know, try not to put yourself in the wrong position and wrong place and hang around people that uh, keep you keep you structured and keep you right. What would you guys add to that? I, I would uh, just to just to piggyback off what Andre is saying. I don't think we've had to say too much. You know, I think I think I think kids are, are ready to step up. Kids are ready to be mature. I think kids are ready. I think I think kids are ready to, you know, they, they don't need somebody to hold their hand. I think I think I think people are ready to, pro to progress to the next step. And I think in the long run, that's what's going to make us a better football team. Um, I would say just understanding what we represent. I mean, you have the name on the back of your jersey, which is your family. You have the name on the front, which is Rutgers. And, and representing both of those things to the, to the highest of your capabilities is what you should be trying to do and what we should be trying to do 24-7, you know, uh, character being, you know, what you do when people aren't looking. You know, make that into who you are, not just something you do when you step through the doors of the football building. And I think we're starting to get that. Let's take it on the field. And last year, one of the big blows to this team was your injury. You essentially missed the entire season. I know you played a few snaps here and there, but but basically didn't play. So I think one of the big questions people want to know is how's your health? Best I've felt since. You know, I've, I've gained a lot of weight. Last time I played, played football, I was 248. I'm not 286. Wow. Um, 
been conditioned in the right way with Coach Parker. You know, we've been doing a lot of things on, on and off the field, and I've got a great support system from friends to family who've been there with me every step of the way, man. Without them, I couldn't have got this far. You guys are on the defensive line together. Uh -huh. What does it mean to have Darius back? It's, 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 it's just awesome. It's awesome, man. He's one of my best friends, my roommate. Um, it's going to be a pleasure to play on the field with him this, this, uh, this fall. I mean, somebody you want out there who brings that fire, brings a competitive edge, and that we constantly challenge each other. And we're going to be challenging each other um, because it doesn't stop. You know, we're trying to raise the bar for what we think is the bar and for the people around us and try to be the best leaders as we can and, and, and try to do our jobs as best we can. You talk about raising the bar. You guys are certainly well aware of this. I don't need to tell you. The defense was the Achilles heel of this team last year. Chris Ash is a defensive guy, no bones about it. So how do you get this defense to a level where you guys can compete in the Big Ten? Just understanding who we are, understanding who we are, what we do best, uh, you know, the basis of our defense and helping uh, helping all the, all the young guys get caught up. And, and as guys who've played a lot of football, um, helping them understand what it's going to be like on game day before it gets here so that when game day comes, it's not a big surprise. I think when everybody's on, a, on the same page and the defense has a, a mentality and identity, uh, we work together a lot better. Um, we're working on that now, and I can't wait to get into camp simply you know, to, to get it, keep it going. And one thing I would like to add with that, I mean, just from working with Coach Ash these past couple of months, when you say he's a defensive mind, I don't, I don't really think – people really understand what you mean. I mean, this, this guy is a genius, you know, and, and the things that he focuses on, he focuses on such the, the smallest things, the smallest things, because as you know, and as people who've played ball know, the smallest things can become the biggest things, and big things will cost you a game, you know, and then the, the fact that he's able to harp on those little things and, and get the younger guys who would just be their first time playing real ball to understand those things, man, it really blows my mind sometimes. Yeah, I mean, all you have to do is look at the track record to yeah. understand how good a defensive coach Chris Ash is. Offensively, are you ready to put up Leonte Carew numbers here, Andre? <laughs> Absolutely. I feel like uh, with Coach Ash bringing in Drew Maringer with the spread offense, you know, it's definitely going to give me and the rest of the receivers a lot of opportunities to touch the ball and make big plays. In all seriousness, what did you learn from being around Leonte, who was as dominant an individual performer, I think, as we had in the league last year when, when he was healthy? I uh, definitely learned that film is important. You know, watch a film and be able to critique yourself and critique the things you do on the field and just doing extra work. You know, those are some of the things, you know, he passed down to me and some of the things I'm going to have to pass down to the younger guys. There's a lot of question marks about the quarterback situation. You have a couple guys returning from last year. You inject a transfer into that mix as well. What can you tell us about each one of the candidates and what you've seen from their preparation? I would definitely say, you know, between the quarterbacks we had before the transfer, uh, before Allen came in, you know, there was already a competitive battle going on in that room. And now that he came in, he just brought more competitiveness. And they're all battling for a spot. So, honestly, it is, come, come camp, it's, it's going to be a battle for that position. Both of you guys are New Jersey guys, right? Yeah. You stayed home. Yeah. Play for Rutgers. We were talking with Coach Ash a little while ago about trying to close off the borders of the state of New Jersey. How do you get more people to, to follow in your footsteps? Well, I think for certain classes, it takes that it takes that one kid, you know, that one kid who who totally believes in a program, who 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 has the power to get other people on board. You know, I think I think players want to play with other good players. And when you get enough good players to stay home, man, that's, that's a real eye-opener for all the other talented kids in, in New Jersey. We've got a lot of talented kids in New Jersey, and if we could just, we could just keep them here, man, there's no telling what this program could do. Yeah, I think, I think being from Jersey is, is a certain culture that you, that you ins, that's instilled in your blood, man. I love it. Um, but at the same time, you know, as, as important rec as recruits are, you know, they see, and as, and as football players, we can see into a culture. I mean, even before you're there, you know, if you get a vibe when you come into a locker room or you get a vibe when you walk into a football building, you can really feel it. And I think, you know, as players currently now, we, we have to make sure that we instill it as much as this culture um, as we can and really let it, let it become us. And when, when, when people come and people come to our, our program, they'll, something, that we'll, they'll, excuse me, something they want to be a part of. Um, you know, I just think when you walk into a place and there's a certain aura about it, it's definitely a place you want to be a part of. And I think as we continue to build that within us, um, it'll attract more people. Darius, we're talking about this as your annual visit to Chicago, but I know a week or so ago you were in New York, part of the Life Beyond the Game program. Yeah. Give us a sense for that and, and what that meant to your summer. 
I mean, it's been a lot. You know, I, I, ultimately, when football is done, this is what I would like to do. I would like to do something like this. I understand it's a little different on the other side of the microphone, doing the research, asking the questions, but it's, it's definitely something that I'm eager to learn more about. So, um, you know, God willing. So here we go. Uh, ABC News, where else were you guys? <laughs> uh, we went to SNY. I, yeah. I know a couple of other guys were at Google, but we went to uh, ABC News, places like SNY. It's, it's really amazing how much work goes on behind the scenes. You know, everybody just looks at the final product of things and things, things that things, I think things just happen overnight. But really, there's so much work that goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people won't get credit for. I'd love to give you insight into how the business works, but, you know, I frankly have no idea. But if you ask Howard, you <laughs> Howard tends to have a, a lot more insight into this than I do. Uh, Andre Patton, Julian Penix Odrick and Darius Hamilton. Guys, thanks so much for spending Pleasure. a few minutes no with us. Enjoy thanks the rest you of your man. time in Chicago, and best of luck this oh, yes. year. We look forward to seeing you. Thank in you. Preseason practice, which isn't that far away. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Getting fired up. <laughs> As we